Today we're going to talk a little bit about audience analysis, and this is really an important aspect of any good public speech. But before I get into that, I'm going to tell you a quick story to illustrate kind of the idea and, see, and let you be able to evaluate how effective audience analysis is. I once worked at a shoe store many years ago. There was a high-end store, a lot of rich ladies that came in to buy shoes. Well, on one, one occasion, she came in, a lady that I'd sold shoes to a number of times, and she bought some shoes, or she, wanted, she tried some shoes on, and she asked me a very difficult question. Because when she put the heels on, there were some fancy Prada shoes that were just ugly. You know, that's the only thing I can say. They were just really ugly. So I'm ne you gotta visualize this moment. I'm kneeling down, putting the shoe on her foot, and then she, she puts her foot out and says, Joe, what do you think? And so in that moment, I had to decide, I had to encode as to what I would say to that lady. And so that's, that's kind of what audience analysis does. But I knew her, I'd been around her a while, I understood her, I thought. So what I told her was, I smiled up at her and said, ma'am, those shoes just aren't you. And she smiled back at me and said, aren't you the charmer? And what she understood was the shoes really looked bad on her feet, but I had said it in a more uh, gentlemanly way, a more soft way, rather than just saying, hey, those shoes are really ugly. That's kind of how encoding and decoding works. Well, audience analysis is what that's like. And so what we're gonna do today is sort of talk about that. And then at the end of my talk, you'll be able to evaluate whether that was a good response or not. So audience analysis is the ability to discover common ground, or really the process, it's not really an ability, but it's the process. How do you go about that? What's, what, what's the process? And that's what we're gonna talk about. But I want you to understand what common ground means. It just simply means, is my field of experience, which we talked about earlier, the same or close to the same as yours? And the closer it is, the easier it should be for me to communicate with you. Now, that's not always the case, but when you look at those, those areas, then you're gonna see that gives you some clues about what might be the best word to choose in a particular moment, just like I had to do in, these, in the store that day. So let me talk about three different areas. The first is the occasion. And by occasion, I mean just what that word means, the circumstances, the situation where you're at, you know, and, and how that affects how people will culturally accept your answer. I remember watching uh, my uncle one time at a funeral bend down and, and talk to this young boy who was one of the, you know, his dad had just passed away. And he, he knelt down with him and he explained that his dad was now with Jesus and that it was going to be okay, that he was in a better place, that he wasn't hurting anymore, he wasn't sick anymore. Now, he could have just said, hey, listen, son, your dad's dead. Get over it. Probably inappropriate thing to say in that moment because the occasion was, would, was right for him to be a little softer. I mean, after all, it's a kid. So you need to understand the culture you're going to walk into. You need to understand how much, you know, all kinds of small little things like how much time you have, what the expectation is for the speech in terms of persuasive or informative. There's a whole bunch of different things. And in your book, it, it describes these in pretty great detail. But you need to understand the occasion. Second, the demographics. And by demographics, I mean things like age, uh, race, creed, religion, political beliefs, all of those things like that, that are, are cut and dry. You know, we, we know what they are. How much money they make. Uh, you know, as a group, how, how does that fit into that? Because that's going to affect how they decode your message and the way that they remember that word, what their filters are, are huge in determining how they decode that message. So if the demographics are close to you, right, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant old guys like me, well then, hey, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the right audience. But if they're a lot younger or I don't know how they could be older, but you know, possibly, uh, but a lot younger, you know, different racial or political beliefs, you know, those things could all factor into the process. Okay, so let's talk about 
the subjective. And the subjective has to do with their opinions. What are their beliefs? What are their core beliefs about, especially about religious, political, cultural kinds of things? What are some things that they believe to be true? Now, they may not be true in your opinion, but what they believe is what is important because that's the filter through which you're going to be heard. And you have to know what that is. Okay, how do you Im implement the implementation of audience analysis? Well, you ask questions. Somebody calls you and says, hey, Joe, I want you to come speak at this organization. You say, well, how many people? What do they do for a living? You just ask those kinds of questions. And again, your book goes into deep detail about how, how you go about that. You, you study the audience. You maybe, maybe you even ask them questions about your subject, if it's a big enough audience, where, the, where that's going to be useful. So these three factors really well into the process of audience analysis. And that leads us back to my example, encoding and decoding. Because the lady that I spoke to that day, she decoded my words. She understood exactly what I was saying, that the shoes were ugly and they looked terrible on her feet. Right? which is what I really wanted to say, but by choosing not to say it in those exact words, but to dress it up and make it a little nicer, she, she liked that. It showed respect for her, right? That, that was kind of my attitude. Was, my mother always said, you know, you have to be careful about how you word things sometimes, and she's right. She knew more, more than she knew. So the point I want to get at here is that as you prepare your speech, you need to know who the audience is, what their beliefs are, what the circumstances are, and then you can choose the right words in the right order to make it happen. Thank you.